Power to the Truth, this is Margot. This is Monday, January 7th, 2019. It's 4.20 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. I'm going to show you some pictures from my last trip up to the Mount Rose area. And it just went a little ways in, but um, this was from August 26th, 2012. So... I'm sure the trees have died off even more since then. But I want to zoom in and show you what's on this hill over here. This is Slide Mountain that's located across the highway from Mount Rose. And see what's on top of this mountain? all kinds of cell phone towers every shape size kind dishes towers anything you can think of and some I've not ever seen before they're right on the top of the mountain and they're beaming 24 7 so that people can have their cell phone service and the trees are dying. I mean, they're dying for a lot of reasons, but the trees up in that area are is just like a waste wasteland. It's a graveyard. It seriously is a graveyard. Here's another view. Look at this one with the drums on it. See how tall they are? Here's another view. I want you to think about this because how many of you own cell phones? I'll bet everybody does. I am one of the few that does not own a cell phone. I had one for about two years, but then I got rid of mine. Look at this. And there's structures up there for the power source. Here's more. I mean, as far as you can see. And now, I'd like to show you some of the trees. This was 2012, remember, and see how they're dying and being stripped on this side, and that's the side where the cell phones, the beaming is coming in from the cell phones. And you can see it on all of these trees here. And it was so sad. I'm empathic with the earth and with the trees. And and it was just, I was basically crying as I was walking through the forest in 2012. Look at these. Those had been pine trees at one time. Look at this one. And you can see the edges. Uh, you can see the trees are not healthy. You can see the brown in them. And I know a lot of people are seeing trees die off. And they're leaving the planet because it's not safe for them to be here any longer. Look at this. This had been a pine tree. This one. And then off in the distance is the hill. Slide Mountain. So, there you go. So we're going to talk about 
some more aspects of this 5G technology today. I know I'm getting into some areas that might be difficult for people, but I think these are important things for people to be aware of and to know about because it's affecting all of us, whether you want to realize it or not. And it's been affecting you for a long time and it's about to be affecting the whole planet and no amount of mitigation of the climate is going to change the effects of this microwave 5G technology that's coming in it's already happening so far what you've seen as far as effects of 5G has been described from ground level 5G where um, they're just uh, they have the 5G for the for the cell phones but um, they've just rolled it out in a few cities around the world this year I mean last year in 2018 2019 is going to be the big rollout and in order for the 5G to happen, they have to have satellites. So I want to share this article today. It's from MFA Media Group. And it was published today, uh, January 7th, 2019. And the title is 20,000 5G Satellites Microwave the Earth with Radiation. Now this is a very good article. Unfortunately, they don't leave the um, references below, but the the man, the main gentleman and his information that they're referring to is Arthur Furstenberg, and I've done some research and I've got some information for you from him if you want to go further with this. Public attention about 5G has been focused on the plans of telecom companies to install millions of small cell towers on electric utility poles, on public buildings and schools, on bus stop shelters, in public parks, and anywhere they want in national parks and on federally owned land. In local urban communities there would be a cell tower approximately every 500 feet along every street. As bad as these small cell towers might seem from the standpoint of constant exposure to radio frequency or RF radiation in close proximity to the source, perhaps an even more alarming prospect will be the beaming of millimeter length microwaves to the earth from thousands of new communication satellites. The FCC gave approval to SpaceX, that's Elon Musk's organization, on March 29, 2018 to launch 4,425 satellites into low orbit around the Earth. The total number of satellites that are expected to be put into low and high orbit by several companies will be 20,000 satellites. 5G will use phased array antennas to shoot beams of radiation at cell phones. These satellites will use the same type of phased array antennas as will be used by the ground-based 5G systems. This means that they will send tightly focused beams of intense microwave radiation at each specific 5G device that is on the Earth and each device will send a beam of radiation back to the satellite. So that's every cell phone, every smart thing, um, smart device, your smartphone, I mean all of it, everything on 5G will be hooked up to this. Previous generations of RF cellular communication 
used large antennas to send a blanket of radiation in all directions. The lower frequencies they used and the broad distribution of microwaves limited the number of cellular devices that could connect through an individual tall tower. The much shorter length microwaves used for 5G will make it possible to use small phased array antennas to send and receive signals. Phased array antennas consist of clusters of hundreds of tiny antennas that work together to shoot a ray of energy at a target just like a bullet. A cluster of these tiny antennas can be arranged in a 4 inch by 4 inch matrix. The rays of microwaves they produce will be strong enough to pass through walls and human bodies. If they were not strong enough to do this, then everyone with a 5G smartphone would have to stand outside when using the devices. Each 5G product will also have multiple phased array antennas which will be used to create a powerful beam of radiation back to the 5G devices mounted on electrical utility poles or toward a specific satellite in space. These beams of radiation will also need to be strong enough to pass through walls and human flesh, such as a hand or head, to reach the intended destination. This means that if you are in a crowded location, just as an airport or on a train, there will be hundreds, if not thousands, of invisible beams of radiation flying through the environment at the speed of light. As people move in that environment, their bodies will be penetrated by numerous beams of radiation as they walk or as other people walk around them with their 5G smartphones. 5G phones will be much more powerful than previous phones. The effective radiated power of the 5G phased array antenna in phones will be 10 times more powerful than 4G phones. No one will be free from exposure. In addition, 5G beams of microwave radiation will be received and transmitted from new computer equipment, household appliances, and automobiles. Stationary equipment such as Wi-Fi hubs in homes and offices will be permitted to use microwave beams that are 15 times stronger or 300 watts than the signals from 5G phones or 150 times stronger than 4G phones. Why is 5G so much more dangerous than previous microwave communication systems? Arthur Furstenberg author, researcher, and advocate for limiting RF exposure from the environment explains the analysis of 5G radiation that was published in Microwave News in 2002. He stated, when an ordinary electromagnetic field enters the body, it causes changes to move, ch it causes charges to move and currents to flow. But when extremely short electromagnetic pulses enter the body, 5G, something else happens. The moving charges themselves become little antennas that re-radiate the electromagnetic field and send it deeper into the body. These re-radiated re waves are called Brillouin precursors. They become significant when either the power or the phase of the waves changes rapidly enough. 5G will probably satisfy both requirements. This means that the reassurance we are being given that these millimeter waves are too short to penetrate far into the body is not true. 
5G satellites will fill the skies. These are the companies with the biggest plans to deploy satellites. SpaceX, 12,000 satellites. OneWeb, 4,560 satellites. Boeing, 2,956 satellites. Spire Global, 972 satellites. Arthur Furstenberg describes the plans of corporations who want to use 5G technology. He states, Honeywell has already signed a memorandum of understanding become, to become OneWeb's first large customer. It plans to provide high-speed Wi-Fi on business, commercial, and military aircraft throughout the world. SpaceX would like to provide the equivalent of 5G to every person on the planet. Ground-based 5G implementation Ground-based 5G systems are already being implemented in dozens of major cities right now. Plans are being approved by hundreds of other cities, which will allow implementation in 2019 and beyond. As I explained in my previous articles, cities do not have the right to say no to 5G. FCC regulations prevent cities from objecting on the basis of health concerns. They only can speak to issues of aesthetics and the practical matter of the placement of equipment. They are required to say yes, and they better do it quickly, or telecom companies will threaten them with legal action for obstructing their plans. Satellite-based 5G implementation The first two 5G test satellites were launched by SpaceX in February of 2018. Hundreds of other satellites are expected to be launched in 2019. The full set of 20,000 satellites could be put in orbit during the next two years. To put this into perspective, as of September 2017, there were 1,738 operating satellites in orbit around the Earth. This means the number of satellites will be 11 times greater than the current number. Environmental Catastrophe from Rockets Used to Launch Satellites Rocket fuel is very destructive to the Earth's ozone layer which protects us from the harsh effects of radiation from the sun. In 2017, there were 90 rocket launch attempts worldwide. The rockets that use solid fuel produce massive ozone depletion, while rockets using liquid kerosene as fuel destroy less ozone, they release massive amounts of black carbon soot into the air, especially at high altitudes. If the number of annual rocket launches increases by 10 or more times, which is likely under the plans these corporations have made, computer models suggest that the combination of ozone depletion and release of black soot could produce a 3 degree warming effect over the Antarctic and reduce the ozone in the world's atmosphere by 4%. Even though it will be possible for a single rocket to put multiple satellites into orbit, we're still talking about 10 or 20 fold increase in environmental damage over what is being produced today. The 5G satellites have a relatively short lifespan, perhaps only five years, which means there will be high numbers of rocket launches not just in the next few years, but in every year for the foreseeable future. Plus, we're going to be moving to 6G once they get everything covered with 5G. Mercury-based rocket fuel could spread neurotoxins over the Earth. As bad as liquid and solid rocket fuels will be for the environment, 
Apollo Fusion is developing a mercury-based propulsion system for launching rockets. These ion propulsion rocket engines use powerful magnets to push away small charged particles at high speeds, which generates thrust. NASA experimented with mercury ion propulsion in the 1960s, but abandoned the research. Mercury is an extremely strong neurotoxin, which is harmful to all forms of life, especially humans. The risks of an environmental catastrophe are monumental because if there was a malfunction of one of these engines exploded, and one of these engines exploded, highly toxic mercury would be spread throughout the atmosphere and over the earth. All the talk from telecom companies about 5G being a panacea for environmental protection and energy conservation is quite ridiculous when we think about the environmental damage that will be created by any of the rocket engines they choose to use for launching their satellites. Space junk will pollute the Earth. Each satellite will be the size of a small refrigerator and will weigh approximately 880 pounds. With a life expectancy of only five years, this means there will be a massive amount of space junk orbiting the Earth. Eventually, all those satellites will fall down to Earth and will burn up as they enter the Earth's atmosphere. All the hazardous materials in the satellites will be released into the air and will float down to the ground as dust or in droplets of rain. Telecom companies are creating a worldwide disaster in the name of technological progress. 5G is promoted as being the next great wonder in the plan to advance technology to create smart cities where everything and everyone is instantly connected in real time with no lags or lost signals. Of course, there will be a few costs. Everyone will be irradiated with millimeter size, non-ionizing radiation 24 hours a day with completely unknown health effects. Studies designed to investigate harm from 5G will be completed many years after the 5G systems on the ground and in space are fully implemented. At that point, it is very unlikely that telecom companies would dismantle their systems even if it is shown that their technology is causing cancer and other diseases, they would just deny the risks. They will tell us that the science has was settled decades ago. They will tell us that evidence linking 5G to cancer and other diseases is just a conspiracy theory that only a few crackpots believe. Millions of people will suffer from radiation exposure with symptoms such as headaches, weakness, brain fog, impaired ability to learn and reason, chest pain, and numerous other symptoms that will baffle most conventional physicians. There is nowhere to hide from 5G radiation. Today, it is possible to live in a location that has reduced levels of microwave exposure. This is accomplished by choosing a living space that is far away from cell phone towers. However, in the near future, it won't matter where we live because 5G will irradiate us wherever we happen to live or work. Cities can't say no to 5G implementation. FCC regulations have been structured in such a way that local municipalities cannot stop telecom companies from installing 5G. They are specifically prohibited from trying to delay or stop 5G implementation on the basis of health concerns. Their only recourse is to 
try to make the ground-based 5G system somewhat more aesthetically pleasing. Based on what has been happening around the country, telecom companies are sweeping aside local resistance and gaining approval for their 5G systems in rapid succession. Can 5G implementation be stopped? As far as I can tell at this point, the only way that 5G will be stopped will be by congressional action. If enough people raise a stink with their elected officials, then perhaps 5G could put on hold, be put on hold while studies are done to examine the true health risks. Telecom investment in 5G has been massive. They are planning full implementation on the ground and in space in the next couple of years. The time to object is now, and not after hundreds of thousands of people become sick. If you would like to watch an in-depth presentation on the risks and hazards of 5G, then please view the following presentation. Listen to Arthur Furstenberg discuss the history, science, and description of 5G, including 5G from satellites in space and its affected expected effects on living things and then they didn't leave the link or references so it was almost like the article was a little bit incomplete but I did find like I said um, Arthur Furstenberg his info but um, this this was such a powerful article I felt like I needed to go ahead and share it and um, I don't know that there is, you know, we can really fight this. Anyway, here's Arthur Furstenberg's Wikipedia page. He's, um, he's, a, he's an American author and activist on the subject of electromagnetic radiation and health. And he's written a book about it. He's, he's actually a, a victim of wireless um, wireless uh, technology and he had to drop out of med school because he became sensitive to the um, electromagnetic frequencies here is here is a, a 5, 5G explained by researcher Arthur Furstenberg be forewarned this is from August 27th of 2018 and um, he was in Taos, New Mexico in August and spoke in an all-day symposium on 5G. And his talk is here. Uh, and so I will leave links below. This was a really good talk. It's only about 34 minutes long. And he puts it all into perspective. And so you know along with all the stuff with climate change and the arctic sea ice and you know i just see this as the final nail in the coffin and no matter what the climate scientists finally get pushed through that they can try to do to mitigate or slow things down or whatever you know they're not going to stop this. This is Satan's world and people who have not figured this out by now and they think it's just oh you know these men you know they don't know what they're talking about. Well you know the evil mind is what they're they're tapped into and it's, it's the dark mind and it's this satanic mind and it's what's ruling this earth and um there, there's no physical fix to spiritual problem and so you know the sooner people can figure that out and and uh, start getting their spiritual houses in order the better because by the time they get around to doing studies and getting petitions and you know getting people to protest and all that it's it's too late it's just going to be too late and you know like I said yesterday the train has left the station 
and we're just watching it build up speed now so I know that was kind of long but I, I felt like that was important and I wanted to go ahead and share that we're not going to go over comments and stuff today I will tomorrow I felt like this this information took precedence and I'll be talking more about it as time goes on so here I have USGS pulled up all magnitudes for the last 24 hours 230 earthquakes showing on the map it's been quite active and we're going to start with the two and a half magnitudes and higher there are 41 showing on the map in the last 24 hours so let's make sure that we get the ones that came in that were that are going to be falling off the map soon okay here's a 2.7 San Juan Puerto Rico 2.6 at Pinnacles California 2.6 San Juan Puerto Rico now here's a 4.2 down in Chile so let's start down in Chile today down in South America <clears throat> then we'll come around the ring of fire first of all um, I'll just start down here 4.4 at Casita Argentina this was today at 717 this morning my time 10 kilometers deep 4.2 tall tall Chile yesterday at 544 p.m. 10 kilometers deep we can see it's right on the red line here was a 5.0 at Iquique Chile 107 kilometers deep that was today at 5.43 this morning 4.6 at Paramanga, Peru 59 kilometers deep and that was last night at almost at 10 p.m. my time then there was this one off the coast of Central America of 4.6 32 kilometers deep at 11.30 last night my time then here's one up on Venezuela 4.6 at El Pilar Venezuela 17 kilometers deep last night at 9.08 p.m. my time then let's go over here Indonesia has been rocking still and remember this was the area that NASA Worldview had blocked out a few days ago so who knows what they were doing down there so in this view we have a 4.7 27 kilometers deep right there 4.7 up here 144 kilometers deep 4.7 over here south of Java uh, 61 kilometers deep and a 4.4 right here 60 76 kilometers deep now let's come up here this was at the Philippines at 5.5 .5, 35 kilometers deep this was last night at 7 11 p.m. my time it was off the coast so it didn't probably didn't cause any damage there now let's look at all of these um, remember there were I don't know 11 or 12 at one point I was looking and there were 18 here so some of these have fallen off the map so this is what's in the last 24 hours in this same area as in Indonesia 4.5 49 kilometers deep 
4.441 kilometers deep, 4.7, 10 kilometers deep, 5.2, 43 kilometers deep, and 4.8, 60 kilometers deep. And remember, we did see beaming over here in these islands over to the east of that area. We did see beaming on NASA World View. So, okay, I showed you that. Then this one happened in China today at 9.15 my time. It was a 4.5 at uh, Jinding, Jin China, 10 kilometers deep. Coming on up into the Japan area, here was a 4.9 um, in the ocean south of the mainland, 10 kilometers deep. This morning at 6.24 a.m. Here was one um, off the coast. Well, no, it was, yeah, it was right off the coast here, barely. Uh, it was 12 kilometers southwest of Kawaguchi, Japan. It was a 4.6, 48 kilometers deep. Now, okay, Russia's good. Let's go up to... Um, do Alaska while we're up here. So these are the ones that are above two and a half magnitude or higher. I'll just call them off. 2.6 right down here in the Aleutian Islands. 2.9 Anchorage. 3.1 Kodiak. We saw, we've been seeing them there recently. 2.8, Coho. 3.3, Valdez. And 2.7, Valdez. So the rest of the, mag the rest of those earthquakes are in the smaller magnitude. So let's see if we can see how many are there. So there's a total of 83 in this Alaska region. And how many were over here? Six. So, 77 that were lower than 2.5 magnitude. So if you zoom in, you can see uh, bunched up at Anchorage and bunched up over here too, but mainly bunched up right here in this Anchorage area where that big one hit in December. <clears throat> Let's go to Hawaii while we're here. We've got 14 all on the mainland or right there on the coast. There's a uh, most of them or here's a 2.4 2.4 and the rest were under that. So now let's go over to Dominican Republic. And we've got 13 over here. Here's a 3.4 at Michas, Dominican Republic. 3.0 Puerto Rico, 3.0 Puerto Rico, 3.1 Boco de Yuma, Dominican Republic. Then those are under threes, those are twos. So we can see they're, they're getting higher, larger in magnitude, not higher. <clears throat> now up in the United States, here's a small one up here in upstate New York, uh, 1.3, that was 5 kilometers deep, near 
Hanawa Falls, New York. We don't see many there. Here's one in North Carolina. A 2.2 near Canton, North Carolina, 0.1 kilometers deep. These two in Oklahoma. A 3.4 at Medford, 5 kilometers deep. And a 2.2 at Okarchi, 5 kilometers deep. Then down here at Pecos, Texas, there was a 2.6, 5 kilometers deep. Now let's go up to Utah. There's been one, a 1 1.4 at Fairview, Utah, minus 1.7 kilometers deep, so that was up in the mountain. Now moving on up into the Yellowstone area, we're seeing four here, 1.1 at Whitehall, Montana, 1.7 Old Faithful, Wyoming, Old Faithful Geyser, 2.1 Soda Springs, Idaho, and a 2.4 Afton, Wyoming, or near Afton, Wyoming. It, it looks like it was um, across the line in Idaho. So we got four, and we can see they're getting a little little larger in magnitude there. Let's go on up to the northwest. Okay, did we get this one? Yeah, we got the White Hall. Here's one near Seattle, 1.7 at home, Washington, 20 kilometers deep. Here's an explosion that caused a 1.8 magnitude earthquake. It was 13 kilometers northwest of West Longview, Washington, minus 0.6 kilometers deep. So that was up on a hillside or in a mountain. Now let's <clears throat> come on down through California and Nevada. We'll do these together. 0.4 at uh, Mineral, California. Here's one at Pyramid Lake. I showed you pictures of Pyramid Lake. This one was in the lake. So this was on the other side. The, remember the pyramid is over here. So this is across the lake up here. And this was a 1.0, 14 kilometers deep. Okay, we got that. 0.4 mineral. Down here, uh, Silver Springs, a 1.1, 1.2 at Hawthorne, 1.4 at Gabs. Okay, we've got a cluster here near Mono Lake. This is significant. Remember, this is part of that. Uh, the volcano area. This is a hazard zone. So we've got 20 here today. So, um, and they're small. It looks like the largest is a 2.1 and uh, oh, here's a 2.7 2.1 then um, the rest of them are under 2 it looks like but they're all, they're all, look at that. They're all clustered right there. So something's happening right next to Mono Lake. Something's happening. Now let's come on down. Uh, here's a point six at Mammoth Lakes. Here's another cluster at uh, volcanic table land. There is a um, 1.0. Now Bishop is over here. It's saying it's west of Bishop. Um, I'm just going to call these off. 1.0, 1 1.7, 1 0.5, 2.1, 2 and 0.6. So these are all in the same area. 
So here's a point nine at Big Pine. Two point one at Kernville. One point four at Bodfish. Let's see this one. Okay. Here's um here's one. They're saying near Beatty, but Beatty's over here in Nevada. That's a point seven zero kilometers deep. Now let's look at the rest of Nevada real quick. We can see these are small and down near the Nevada testing area. So um, we've got 13 here today. 1.2 at Alamo. And then the rest of them, it looks like they're under ones. And some microquays, some minus, minus magnitude. So we'll just note those. Now let's go on down. Did I get all those? Yeah, they're all at Beatty. Okay. Clustering. So it's going to cause movement even though they're small and whatever the the source of it is, it's going to cause movement to happen. Okay, we saw that one. Let's go back up here to Sacramento. Okay, the geysers. And we only have one at the geysers today. It's a 2.5. Normally we see a cluster there. Here's one right off the coast of San Francisco. See, it's right next to that red line, that San Andreas fault line. It was a 1.1 and it says it's west-southwest four kilometers west-southwest of San Francisco Zoo. I'll bet the animals felt it. Even if we couldn't. Here's some more on the fault line. Here's um, two at Park Field, a 1.6 and a 1.8 right together there. Now we already got those, the Kernville. Here's one down by Victorville, uh, 2.6, 7.9 kilometers deep. That's getting up there. Now down into the Los Angeles area. There are 36 in the viewing area here. Here's the Salton Sea. Let's see if there's any down in Mexico. I don't see any today. No. So we had 36 right here. And they're small. The, there's a 2.2 Via Vista. And the rest are under twos and under ones. Here's a 2.6. Oh, we saw that one. That was the biggest one. Let's zoom in. <coughs> See this. Where is the Kawea area? Here's the Kawea area. Look at all of those. They're just. How many are there? 17 right there right near that Indian Reservation. So, let's see if anything came in while we were doing our report just now. Huh, 1.3 North Pole, Alaska. So, okay, it doesn't look like um, of anything of significance. These are small. It looks like we got these. <coughs> so, 
so I do believe we are in the end times I do believe that time is short and that everyone needs to get their spiritual house in order and until next time I love you all very much and I'm praying for all of all of us all of you all of us out there to go within and get things settled and you know if you want to know if God is real ask God if you're real you know give me a sign let me know and once you start asking you'll be receiving answers but you have to ask so until next time I love you all God bless you go in peace and good night